A functioning power grid will cost over $10 billion for a country the size of Nigeria. That requires FDI and private sector involvement. It cannot be subsidized by government as no private sector investor views that as sustainable and reliable. With constant power supply, almost all the problems in Nigeria will be eliminated because it affects all sectors, starting from business to security. If President Bola Ahmed Tinubu can do this, he'll be the best president ever. There are too many discos distributing less than 4,000 megawatts of electricity. Nigeria is the only country in the world that does it. Hello there. We really want to thank you once again for your comments and feedback. We appreciate them. Please keep them coming. Today we want to have a conversation around something that concerns us, around electricity consumption, which is not scarce. Indeed, everyone talks about this commodity. While some enjoy it to the optimum, others hardly get it, resorting to a generating set or other means. It is considered a vehicle and a necessary ingredient for economic growth and development. Therefore, any society that doesn't have this resource adequately is considered one not ready for the desired growth. But that's not so for Nigeria. The federal government, and indeed government, says it's on course. It's also transitioning towards a targeted subsidy regime in the Nigerian electricity supply industry to mitigate the macroeconomic impact. And in view of this, the Regulatory Commission, that's NERC, the Nigeria Electric Electricity Regulatory Commission reviewed tariffs upwards from electricity distribution companies, 11 of them. The approved tariff only affects customers in Band A who have been receiving steady supply of electricity, while the customers in Band B to E categories are not affected. Now, some are crying foul. Given that electricity distribution companies in Nigeria generated significant revenues in the third quarter of 2023, totaling about 268 billion naira against a total billing of 350 billion naira, there are some who are questioning the rationale behind this increase. Is it worth it? Is it what the Nigerian people need at this point in time? Our guest says the revised tariff is expected to reduce subsidies by 1.14 trillion in 2024, aligning with the government's subsidy realignment. NERC has implemented a monitoring framework and enforcement mechanism to ensure service quality and accountability. Newsnight had a conversation with the vice chairman of the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, Dr. Musili Oseni. He speaks about the circumstances that led up to the review of the tariff and how it will benefit the consumer eventually. Dr. Mosley Oseni, thank you for sticking with us on Newsnight. Um, many will say this is not a very comfortable time to be in the NERC. But you've been here for a while now. Talk to us. Let's begin from there. What has the journey been like for you in NERC? leading up to this current decision that was taken. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I think you want me to go on a memory lane a bit. I joined NRC in 2017. And first and foremost, when I was approached to come and become its commissioner in 2016, I rejected and that's no to many of my friends as they keep today. But upon being persuaded and I had to succumb, in fact, the decision had not been made before I heard that my name was announced. So in 2017, we resumed. And uh, to the glory of God, we've kept moving. Mm. And I would like to say that uh, it has been a great journey for me personally in terms of experience. I had a background in research. And everything in research is that you need to publish or perish. Mm. And for you to publish, you need to criticize and bring new things, uh, which of course, that if you are operating outside the government, you don't know what is inside. Mm. So once you join and you know that certain decisions are taken, not because they are convenient decisions, but they are decisions that are necessary to be taken. Okay. Uh, so I asked that question, and it's a good thing that you've been here since 2017. So you know the trends, you have an idea. So you were a part of the decisions or you know about the decisions to um, move the electricity tariff sometimes, 2000, 2001, 2022, right? 
I mean, 2020, 2021, 2022, and or yeah, and now 2024. So you know all of these times that tariffs were moved. And as you said, yes. being one who is in research, they were effectively researched. So let's look at those movements. What were they, what was the impact like at each time the tariffs were increased? And in fact, when you now introduced your tariff plan, what has the impact been like? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Yes, um, after 2017, we joined. Unfortunately, the commission could not uh, perform its statutory responsibility until 2019 because of a litigation that was uh, instigate, instituted by one of the consumer advocates. Um, the matter was dealt with by the court in 2019. And that paved way for the commission to resume its Excuse statutory uh, duties. So um, in doing so, we look at what has had happened during that period within which the litigation was on. And we realized that the inability to review rates had seriously impacted on the performance of the industry. One thing we need to realize is that for people to invest in any industry, uh, recovery must be certain, or there is, must be a path to recovery. So in 2020, the commission reviewed the tariff. And uh, when we review the tariff, I think it's important we understand that all this while, the tariff might be reviewed, but uh, the tariffs were not reflecting the actual cost. So government was still subsidizing. So even this review we did, which was very difficult for us because the journey started last year, around the same time, this time last year, um, is still not reflective of the cost, at least if you look at the weighted average. For the current Bante customers that are affected, of course, is reflective of the cost, but for other customers, is it is not, not reflective. So we, the one thing is, electricity is an engine of growth. Um, if we want to develop as a country, we need to have sufficient electricity. And for that to happen, investments will be required. And electricity is capital intensive. And for you to really attract the investment, the pricing must be right. Uh, serious investors will not want to come into a business where uh, the dependence on government intervention or subsidy is significant because such subsidy may not come as a when due, so which has implication in time follow of money. Mm -hmm. Investors may need to uh, pay back their loan. All those things are implication. So we then in 2020 decided that we began a journey to transition to cost reflectivities in line with the policy document and policy decision of the government then. So we began that journey uh, until 2022, where we were close to what could be said to be cost reflective then. But I think I need to also to explain something. Um, in 2022, as at December 2022, for instance, uh, the subsidy on electricity, like a, a few other products, Petron and Co, were in two firms. One was feasible, the other one was Eden. Okay. Let's say, for instance, as a den, we use, let's say, exchange rate of, uh, I think, about 400 naira to a dollar. Yeah. And let's say the cost reflective tariff then was. Uh, 70 naira, for instance. And on average, what the customers were had to pay was 65 on average. That means that first and foremost, there is a subsidy of five naira, right? So, but be mindful that the exchange rate used as that, at that time was what we call official exchange rate that many investors did not have access to. So that means that there is another subsidy hidden on the exchange rate that was used. That is, if they had access to that exchange rate, it means that they had access to subsidized 
exchange rate. So mm -hmm. government was subsidizing exchange rates. Then also you have a five naira gap again in the electricity that government was subsidizing. Uh, prices. So those were the issues at that time. Then moving to this term in 2023, around uh, this time, I think in March or April, I think around this time, um, the distribution companies filed an application to the commission for a revision of their rates. Because at that time, they says that the gap between the cost reflective rate and the rates that were, they were allowed to charge customers had actually gone up. Mm -hmm. So we began the journey. Then there was a unification of exchange rates, which happened around uh, June last year. Yeah. So, and that was a good policy decision by the government, no matter how difficult it was. Because uh, that unification now brought it out clearly the subsidy that was hidden and the one that was feasible. Mm -hmm. And that is what we now see in that played out now. Because if you look, let me give you an example. Um, the most reliable generation plant in Nigeria is Asura. They have firm contract, back to back, gas, everything. But at the same time, Azura is the most expensive plant. The cost of generation alone today for Azura is around 160 naira per kilowatt hour. For Thermal Jenkos, that is the successor Jenko like Abin, Transcorp, Geregu, and so on and so forth, their average uh, cost of generation is also over 100 naira per kilowatt hour. The hydro is about 60 naira. But there is limit to the <clears throat> share of hydro we have in the pool. So when you now look at that, it becomes at least clear that there is a serious gap between what the price is supposed to be and what, what it, is. it is. So that creates a significant problem whereby the performance of the sector began to go down. We will experienced grid collapse. Not only that, many times you had very limited generation available. So as a result of that, everybody was complaining, including the industry, the households, that oh, the service has deteriorated. I think December, we were lucky, but from January this year, things... And what, one of the reasons that accounted for that is because of non-payment. These schools can only be compelled to pay on the basis of what they are allowed to charge. You can't compel them to pay for what they've not been allowed to charge. Mm. Uh, the last bill, uh, the last invoice from Embert was 240 billion. These schools were only uh, mandated to pay about 10% of it. So if you get 10% quickly as generator, you generate. Meanwhile, last year, you were holding a lot of money also. You are not able to pay for gas again. So definitely, generation will begin to go down. So if we are not saying that we are protecting Nigerians, that's why we don't want to give them the cost-reflective tariff. We keep the tariff lower. But the generation is going down. They now have to resort to alternative generation. DC, mm. petrol, it becomes problematic. So they are worse off. So with all of this now, you've painted a picture of what the situation was and what is and what it ought to be. And so the people may not have been carried along. That's what you're saying. The people were not clear or the citizens, the consumers, but not given clear information aspect. This is what you are supposed to pay for. This is what you're paying. And this is where the government has been supporting all that you do, right? That's what we're saying right now. Okay. So the decision now to move the tariff to 225 to a, for a certain group was just to ease that burden on the government? Okay. Um, I think you are correct, but I will look at it also from another perspective. Uh, it's both a, a way of relieving the government some of the burden 
and also relieving the customer's part of the body. As I said, if you pay very low price and you don't now, the service deteriorates, you spend more on generator, which is more expensive. At the end of the day, you are better off to pay a little higher price for the grid supply and spend nothing or very little on generator. By the time you look, you had the two together, you had uh, the you compare the two scenarios, mm. you will realize that definitely customers too are going to be better off for it. Mm. So now what we have done, uh, you said the uh, customers or Nigerians were not being carried along. Uh, I don't think it's totally uh, right. And I don't, I, I can't say it's 100% wrong. Yeah. Because there were consultations that were held previously discussing with consumers. But one thing, that is clear is that unlike what we started in January, when we issued the MITO order, tariff order in January, in that order, we indicated based on the exchange rate and some other components, we indicated what the cost reflective tariff should be and what customers were being charged in the same order. It wasn't done previously. So I think it can be taken that to some extent, your assertion was Correct. Okay. Now, in, in, in the face of all of this, for instance, okay, so you, you're looking to make the consumers more comfortable to ensure that they have power. I ask a question. Is the electricity sector in Nigeria completely deregulated? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And no. And uh, there is no country in the world where electricity sector is completely deregulated um, because of the natural monopoly elements in the business of electricity at certain segments you have to have a regulator in place to protect the interest of consumers fantastic so, so the and that's where you come in that's where NERC comes in but though NERC is there you have generating companies that are privatized the generation is privatized Distribution is privatized, but yet you sort of have a fixed rate or is there a range within which these privatized companies are meant to operate? Okay, uh, thank you. As I was saying, for instance, if you look at the Nigerian electricity sector, it's safe to say that generation is privatized, that is, then distribution. Then you have transmission company that is still owned and managed by the government. Uh, as I said, that uh, nowhere in the world where you have completely Deep fully regulation. regulated electricity market. If you take UK, for instance, you have generation, you have generation privatized, you have uh, or, or what I can call more or less deregulated, that is competition. Then you have transmission, which is still more or less monopoly, it's a monopoly, which is their national grid, that is the company. Then you have DNOs, distribution network operators. They have about 14. Those are regional monopolies. Then you now have supplier side. They have four segments. In our own case in Nigeria, we currently have three segments. So they have suppliers in the UK. Suppliers also, there is competition at that level. Those are the people that buy and just sell on retail. So in our case, let me come back to in Nigeria specifically, uh, we've privatized the Jenkos, then we've privatized the distribution aspect or segments. But because of the nature of the markets, currently you have regional monopolies in distribution operation. For instance, you have Ikeja covering a part of Eco. Uh, Lagos, rather. Right then you have a Codisco covering another part of Lagos. You have a Bada covering about five states and so on. In those states, in or in those states, you don't have a strong competitor to compete with the Bada Electricity Distribution Company. Without that, definitely the their operation will have to be regulated. So what we do in determining the rates is to look at their application. Okay, you've uh, presented to the commission 
I want to spend so 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 a month on maybe feeders in expanding my feeders and so on and so forth. The commission will look at it that is it prudent? There are certain principles that govern uh, regulatory activities when it comes to review of race. You need to look at prudence and you need to look at the principle of use and useful. Is the amount being put forward by the disco prudence? Uh, is the targeted investment going to be used and useful? Because we don't want a situation whereby you invest and that investment is not going to be useful to deliver service to the consumers. So those are the things we check. And on that basis, if you look at the provision of the Act, Section 116, 116.2a, uh, mandates the Commission to also, in our activities, allows licensees that operate efficiently to earn sufficient revenue for its operation and also a return on investment made. Mm -hmm. So we are guided by that to ensure that while we don't want them to overboard the consumer, uh, consumer or their customers, at the same time, we also need to make sure that we provide incentive for investment by mm -hmm. making sure that the rate are, are approved for them is sufficient enough to cover efficient operation. Mm -hmm. So again, the, all of this sounds very technical and mm -hmm. the average consumer out there all they care about is just let's have power. Um, we'll get back to that matter of the the, de the delineation into the different bands. Uh, but let's look at, since we're talking about the discos, you have regional monopolies. And I do know that these discos are part owned by government. Yes, they are privatized, but 40% of the own of ownership of discos is government, both state and federal. So is it, why then is it is it the government that is ensuring that there's, there's no competition for the different discos or is the investment too high for the private sector really to come in and own other discos that can give competition to the regional okay government? thank you yeah government has 40 percent and government is not stifling competition but as i said if i asked you today let's say you have a win for revenue Will you be willing to invest in the Nigerian power sector today? Will I, be, I, would I be given room to operate as that, I should? That, that, that's where I'm going. Okay. Currently, the price that is allowed to be charged is not reflective of the cost. So, so you government is, of course, is shouldering the subsidy. Uh, based on the way government operates, the subsidy may not come as and when they will first. And secondly, many investors will not be attracted to a sector where the dependence is on subsidy from the government. But what can be really made competitive is the supply aspect. Currently, the distribution companies we have, they do both the distribution, that is providing the wire, and they do supply, they combine it together, that is supplying to my house, your house, and so on and so forth. So we can have competition at the supply level, but until the fundamentals are addressed. But, okay, so, so in the next few minutes, before we go on a quick break, that supply part, are the, are the discos mandated to do that? Or can they, because, I, does that include the metering? Because that's one major challenge we have. Does that include the metering the houses? Do the discos have that mandate? Or can it be given to somebody else? And how easy is it for anyone to come in and say, okay, I want to take up this part? Or is that basically left to the bulk company in Nigeria? Okay. Um, the discos currently, based on their terms, uh, their license, terms and condition of their license, they are meant to provide wire and also supply consumers. So the consumer, the supply bits can be taken away completely or probably allow people to play. But there are conditions that will need to be met. Uh, first and foremost, the stages as highlighted in the, or as provided for in the yeah. act at a certain point, when certain fundamentals or conditions precedents are met, definitely we go to that. 
But today, what I can tell you is that if you have the opportunity and you say you want to become a supplier, when you now have to buy from the disco, for instance, or from, buy from the bulk trader, for instance, let's say, or distribution company, maybe they say this area, you are the supplier, uh, and we meet her, you collect the uh, and, uh, price, or what's it called? The cost. Collect the cost of the bulk energy I'm supplying you, right? But you yourself, you know that if you supply this area you have taken over, you are going to be supplying at a cost below the actual cost. So already you are in a hole because if the tariff does not make up for what we enable you pay for the cost of energy, definitely you are not in a business. So there are certain fundamentals. And you mentioned very important thing, metering. Metering is very essential. There is no alternative to metering and the commission recognizes that. So, because no matter what we do, no matter how sophisticated your mathematical model is, if you are estimating, estimation is estimation. So, because if you do a est- uh, meter bill, there are some customers definitely that will consume more than the average you are using. But there are some customers that will consume less also than the average you are using, because that's one thing about the law of average. So it's not going to be accurate. But in order to correct, at least to avoid arbitrary billing, the commission introduced cap pin order. That is, whereby we look at the energy go, that goes into some areas. On the basis of that, every month, we adjust the cap. It's not going to be perfect. It's not accurate. That's why we've been talking to the government to ensure that meters are rolled out. And government is seriously working on that. When Newsnight returns, we ask Dr. Hosseini about the categorization of consumers and the metering, and why metering is still a problem in the country. Welcome back. Dr. Hosseini, it's good to have you here again one more time. Um, that area where we went on break, just before we went on break, we were talking about metering. And I talked about some people that have paid for their meters but have not seen them. Um, what's going to happen to them? And then you, you talked about the cap. Cap me, you talked about map. Both of them have been suspended. Or is map still on? Then how quickly can people that need meters get their meters. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, in short, uh, maps, map is still on. Let me put that way, then I will come back to it. Uh, you mentioned that some people actually uh, paid for meters and they've not uh, got their meters. Um, I think last year, as a time when the meter asset providers were awaiting the review of the price after the, because of the movement in the exchange rates. Um, they decided not to continue a metering, rolling out of meters, because they felt that it was not no longer sustainable for them. So some people paid during the period. So when it came to our attention, we got the statistics of the people that paid uh, from the distribution companies and so on and so forth. And they were mandated to start immediately. The review was done to continue to meet the customers. And we told them those customers were not going to pay extra cover because they had paid before the effective date of the review. Okay. And that metering started. Um, so what now happened is that I think more recently, some people have paid, have received similar feedback. So they've paid, but unfortunately, the meter asset provider also had slowed down in metering because the last review that was done was based on, I think, exchange rate of uh, 700, 800. So now the exchange rates moved to at a point 1,006 and so on. Of course, we thank God it's coming down. 
and kudos to CBN on that. So, but when you look at 800 to even 1,003 or 1,004 that it is now in Africa, or 1,003, there is still a huge gap. gap. Of 500. So they've stopped metering the uh, mid, uh, defendants, the middle asset providers, because they want an increase in price. But the commission has said that instead of uh, sitting down, review the parameters and give them a new price, we want to go to some extent of liberalization. Because you can't fully liberalize the military market yet. Because that's one thing people have been suggesting out there that, oh, why can't you allow me to just go to a shop to buy meter? The challenge with that is that the quality control can be the problem. And a meter is a revenue assurance device for the disc group or revenue protection device. So if the quality of the meter is affected, it can affect revenue. If the quality of the meter is also uh, not good, it can also be adverse to the consumers. consumers because so that's one thing. The other thing is that there is a risk of you going to a shop, you buy the meter, you take it to AEDC, for instance, and they realize that the meter cannot speak to their SN system. So you have the meter, even if you say the meter should be installed, the meter is installed, but you are not able to vent, it becomes problematic. So what the commission is looking at, working on now, is that we will liberalize to some extent, reasonable for now, whereby instead of the commission sitting down and uh, approve rates, we will ensure that in Abuja, let's say you have uh, 30 vendors, 30 members, they will compete on the basis of a price. And wherever we will, will now be, the customer will be able to choose among them because they will lock in their price. There are a system that will be put in place for them to lock in the price at the beginning of the month. Once they do that, you can't change the price. While you're working on the metering thing, um, there's a school of thought that believes that maybe we don't have enough meter manufacturers in the country. Maybe that should also be looked at to see those who are even manufacturing, is the quality right? Are they doing, are they meeting the standards? Are there enough manufacturers in the country? And are the manufacturers even having enough power to do, to run? Because I do know that there's been reactions following this um, uh, price review and the manufacturers, uh, manufacturer association of Nigeria is kicking against that. They'll be thrown out of business. Oh, okay. It's a very good question. Um, we have uh, different categories of people, at least trading meters in Nigeria. You have some that can be called uh, meter asset lane plants of some sorts. Then you have some that you can say, okay, manufacturer, but they are not manufacturing from the scratch because of the current level of uh, our uh, uh, tech advancements because there are certain materials they were needed. And so what they do is probably to import complete knockdown, what we call CKD or semi knockdown meters. So what they now do is some have, have uh, plants where they will now go and couple the meters to now become the way it's supposed to be. Then we have the likes of uh, uh, MoMAS that also has some local content to it, which is, of course, uh, they are still also trying to upgrade the level of the, uh, the volume of local content they can, they are building up their capacity to, to be able to add more value than what they currently have. But I think it's a good uh, start for them. They've really gone uh, reasonable well. So when you look at that, then we have those that do not have a plant, but they are more or less importers of meters. So in whole, I believe, depending on the rate at which metering is happening at a particular time, because if, for instance, the government says, uh, I'm putting out there money, or I'm putting on the table money enough to roll out let's say 2 million or 2.5 million meters 
this year, for instance, and let's assume that we have enough installers that can install the meters. I don't think the current uh, manufacturers or suppliers of meters in Nigeria will be able to keep up with the space. I'm not quite confident. I don't think. But if, for instance, government is say, okay, I have uh, sufficient money for 2 million meters or 3 million meters, but over a number of years, for instance, like, okay, maybe we are only looking at 500,000, 1 million meters this year alone. I would say, yes, they should have the capacity. It's been a while the last time we reviewed the capacity of the of the meter uh, manufacturers or meter vendors in Nigeria. So what is my answer to that question is that it depends on the rates at which we are looking at. So that would determine whether they are able to meet, um, meet uh, keep up with the pace or not. You see, me, as someone would say, the meter is the only communication the consumer has with the provider, the service provider. So if the meter is not there and is a problem, then there will continually be issues. But while there's a meter, there's that bit of the current, the energy that flows into the meter. And NEC has decided to grade consumers into grade A or band A, B, C, D. What was the criteria for that? Okay, thank you so much. Um, before we started this journey of uh, grading uh, clusters of feeders into A, B, C, D, E, we did a lot of uh, review and uh, we realized that, and I'm sure many Nigerians will agree with me that the level of infrastructure varies from one place to another in Nigeria. Uh, you have some places that historically benefited from very good infrastructure and uh, some places that are not so lucky. And uh, coincidentally, most of the state, uh, places that benefited from good infrastructure are more or less the places habiting uh, the relatively well-to-do people in Nigeria. So you talk of uh, Maitama, for instance, the level of infrastructure in Maitama cannot be compared with the level of infrastructure in Yaya. So talk of Rasokoro, talk of some areas in Apu, side of Apu legislative quarters. So, sorry to interrupt. So it's so, infrastructure that's the determined. So based on the that, you know, when there is good infrastructure, the level of flow of power to that area will be higher than the flow of power to areas where you have poor infrastructure. For instance, some infrastructure are not sophisticated enough to withstand 24 hours supply without any breakup somewhere. So, but where you now have good infrastructure, you can supply 24 hours nonstop, is happening in some places. So on the basis of that, we now look at, okay, based on this feeder, we collected the statistics uh, statistics because as far back as 2019, uh, these schools were mandated to put on their 11 kV feeders smart meters and they started the uh, process. So we now collected data from those smart meters that communicated to their meter data management system. So we collected the data, we analyzed the data, and we said, okay, we can group these feeders on the basis of this of this we ask them okay group and we now review based on the data we can see so they did that so what happened so we now say oh this area can are getting 20 hours and above don't let us start with 24 hours because there could be a situation whereby maybe for certain reasons i mean be beyond the control of the discourse maybe a problem at tcn level or generation level so maybe service goes off for some time. So let's start with 20 hours and above band A, then band B, 16 hours and above, band C, 12 hours and above, then D, eight hours and above, and so on and so forth. So we started with, that is the basis for grouping the feeders. Mm. I think- So I, infrastructure, but, but, and the question then is, because infrastructure in an area is good and can carry the weight of energy that's coming in there, 
Does that mean everybody in that area can afford it? Okay, thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, when you look at uh, the areas that have better infrastructure, by coincidence, you see that, okay, people there are relatively well-to-do. Of course, you can have a mix, maybe to some extent, but the proportion, if you look at the share, the ratio will be minimal compared to, let's say you have uh, socially, uh, socioeconomically less privileged people in Maitama, for example, or Asokoro, the ratio there cannot be compared with the ratio in Yanya. That's one thing. And uh, also, most of those places, they have better mutual rates. So if we have a, a mix, let's say you have some people that are maybe socioeconomically less privileged in that area. If they have meter, they definitely can con manage their consumption level. And uh, one, also, one thing we need to look at is the rich. Uh, I think it's safe to say that they have been the biggest beneficiary of subsidy, government subsidy. Because if you look at the duplex in Nasukoro, for instance, they have enough capacity to buy many appliances, ACs, consuming energy. So if you look at the level of consumption compared to places where, even let's assume that, uh, to places where, one, the level of supply is not as good as those places categorized as bad A, and also the nature of the people there means that they could not have as much energy consuming appliance as the people in uh, in those other area rich areas definitely the level the benefits subsidy benefits that the people in that, those rich areas benefit from is higher than the subsidy the people in other areas have benefited again you didn't really answer that question for me if the, you look at the region, you group the band A. For instance, there's a, a the location, Meitama. You mm -hmm. mentioned Meitama. There are people in Meitama that cannot afford this. But let's leave so, that and look okay. at, let's look at the cost of energy, for instance. According to Statista.com, mm -hmm. um, on the average, as at September 2023, the price of electricity used in households in Nigeria amounted to around 23 naira per kilowatt hour. Some about 0 .0, 0 0.016 dollars. On the other hand, industrial electrical energy was priced at 36 naira per hour. Does this tie into this new rate? And then why even move from 63, so to speak, to 225? Couldn't you have moved to 100 or 150? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, back to the first question first on the Let's say my Tama, you have a few people the there. Yeah. yeah. As I said, the metro rates in my Tama, you can compare it with metro rates in some other places. So if you have a meter, you have the opportunity also of managing your consumption. Okay. And I think when it comes to affordability, it appears, it, it's real, right? I think metering availability should be the focus. So, and um, uh, your uh, second question about the pricing. The, the pricing. Before, when you look at, as you rightly mentioned, households, households were paying less than the industrial then. But in, all over the world, it's a matter of rate design. That is how you design. In some countries, you say that uh, households are paying higher than the industrial sector. Then in some countries, our uh, industrial sector yeah. is paying higher than the households. households. For instance, in Uganda, the uh, households pay higher than the industrial sector. But in some other African countries, you also see the rate price. And I think the wisdom then in Nigeria was because we households had been so used to subsidized rates for so long under NEPA, under power holding company of Nigeria and so on. And when the rate was being redesigned, 
it will be difficult for the commission then to just uh, swap or make a significant change and so on. So that was kept like that. But there have been complaining from uh, there have been complaints from the manufacturer association and so on. And oh, why should they be subsidizing households and so on and so forth? And what we don't base is that that difference is no longer there for this set of customers, the 50% yeah. that will be affected Badly. by the, the weight. So if you are in an area where you are getting the supply, you should pay the new rate. So because you are going to pay less on diesel generation, even if you are a manufacturer. Mm. But if your plant, uh, what's it called, your company is also located in an area where the supply is lower, definitely you continue to pay the old the rates. Rate. Because, and the equity in it is that you will likely spend more relatively on diesel generation than the people or the companies located in an area where they are getting 20 hours of supply. We're, we're completely yeah. out of time, but I need to ask you this. The conversation mechanism, the feedback mechanism between the NERC and the customers to resolve issues of complaints between the consumers and discos, is that effectively on? I would say yes, to some extent, um, because I always give room for maybe some imperfection. Mm. Um, we have, uh, based on the extant rules, the regulations governing customer address mechanisms, you are meant to first of all complain to the disco. If the disco doesn't attend to your complaint, you use foreign office, then in foreign rule, we have foreign offices in almost all the states. Then if they, I think currently we have in 30 free uh, locations. So if the foreign rules in your favor and this school doesn't comply, you can appeal to head office. But at the same time, sometimes we don't have to let you pass through that process. If your complaint comes directly to the commission, we have to attend to it, even if it doesn't uh, go to the forum, but you to, to show us evidence that you have reported the complaint, you have complained to the disco and it hasn't been addressed. So we have that, and uh, we are doing so many on the spot resolution. Uh, our staff do go out, um, uh, go out to different places, for instance, uh, Lagos, Ibadan, Enogo, this and Akano, and so on and so forth, call on consumers. We announce, we send SMS to consumers that we have that they are was equal contact under the discos we are uh, franchise area that we are organizing the program and we we resolve some complaints on the spot. And the commission is also uh, trying to leverage technology also to uh, ensure that some of these town hall meetings we do that is in different locations, we can also do some of them online. Mm. So that the people that can not attend the physical one may yeah. be available for online. The, the commission one. is working on so that. So finally, in, 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 in closing, what's the future of energy affordability in Nigeria based on this new tariff that you've brought in? Here? Yeah, yeah um, I think the future is bright, personally. Uh, as I said, if you get the service, is you are better off compared to when you don't get the service. One is that, apart from the cost of alternative generation, the other point is that if the power, if power is available, is what is an engine of growth and is an ingredient ingredient to economic prosperity. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do appreciate your participation in today's program. Your insights are important to us. Let us know what you think about the conversation today. Send us a tweet, send us a mail. Our handles are right there on your screen. But know this also, you can watch these again. Yes, you can catch up with this conversation and other conversations we've had via our podcast. Go to channelstv.com forward slash podcast. You'll see the playlist there, Newsnight, and catch up with this conversation. Also, youtube.com forward slash channels web. You'll get to see the Newsnight playlist there as well and catch up on all of our conversations. Till we come your way again, I'm Neil Tagbe saying... Bye-bye for now.